Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Chris. Uh, I'm going to be showing you guys how to get started with Visual Studio in Revit. Uh, just a couple things. One, don't be afraid of it. It'll be your friend in the end. Um, Got to go through a couple growing pains first to get through it. If this is your first time either coding um, or uh, dealing with it, um, to be honest. Uh, well, Revit's, if you know Revit already, uh, that's great. That's awesome. Keep going. Um, and then if you don't know coding, uh, like I said, don't be afraid. It'll be your friend in the end. Just kind of have to work through the growing pains and then you'll get there. Okay, uh, let's get started. Um, so what we're going to do is you need to first download Visual Studio, right, which we have here. Uh, right. So we got that right. And we'll see these project templates, right? So we got consoles, apps. If you don't know what this is, that's okay. Um, but pretty much you have a whole bunch of template stuff to get that you can open with. If you know Revit, it's kind of like opening up a project template. Um, but uh, what you really want in here is the Revit uh, add-in feature. Uh, I have uh, Revit 2019 installed right here. Uh, and I have uh, Visual Studio uh, also installed. And so you can go to, um, hopefully have a license to Revit. Uh, you can go to the website, download version of Revit. Uh, I don't think I need to put that in the video to show you how to do that. Uh, you should probably, or I can put a link, I guess, in the notes. Um, and then Visual Studio, you can just go to that website and also put a link there to download uh, what you'll need for that. Okay. Uh, the uh, meat of this uh, YouTube is going to be to show you just get the add-in wizard in your in Microsoft Visual Studio so that you can work and debug through Revit using your coding uh, IDE, and IDE stands for, um, no, I can't remember, uh, something development environment, I think. Uh, we'll get there. Anyways, this is my first video, so I'm a little nervous. Bear with me. Okay, let's get to it. Um, okay, so I'll put this link in the notes. This is how you're going to get your add-in wizard created by Jeremy Tamek. This guy's awesome. He's kind of, he pretty much wrote the book, I think. Uh, on uh, how to do this stuff. Uh, him and there's another guy, Ezron, I can't remember his name. Uh, but him, uh, and if you're in SF and you go to the San Francisco development group stuff, you'll know um, Alberto Tono, and then you'll know Danny Bentley. Uh, Danny Bentley also has a YouTube channel with some stuff on here too, but I'm going to kind of get a more in-depth, uh, or I'm going to try to do the simple, simpler stuff uh, and show you guys how to do this stuff. Okay, uh, oh yeah, so what this will stuff will allow you to do is it will allow you to uh, create buttons uh, you know with whatever you need for example like creating a wall uh, grid lines detail items uh, it'll run checks for your through your project too if you can rig it to do it um, we'll eventually get to those uh, I've already created a couple buttons uh, that we will go through um, if I open up my Trello thing Also, a quick tip: uh, when you're watching these YouTube videos, I mean, you know, perhaps things aren't taking too long. Feel free to watch it at two times speed, and typically, or as fast as you can, 1.5 or 1.75, and you'll usually be able to get it. Uh, you'll be able to understand me as I'm speaking. Okay. All right. Uh, this is it. Nope, not that one. Here we go. Okay, so uh, I've created a list of tutorials to go through. Okay, this is what we're going to kind of be going through. First one always in program is Hello World. Just pretty much just getting your program to do a pop up button that says Hello World, right? Pretty basic and simple. Um, that one we'll be using as show test dialogs. Uh, add wall to project. This one's pretty basic. Just click a button and a wall will appear. We'll get more into details later in the walls. Uh, create columns, create sheets, drafting views, place detail component in drafting view. It's got its own little twist to it. Uh, add level to project. Um, any ones that are green you'll see here are ones that I've created. Uh, and of course, ones that don't have a tag on it are ones that I have yet to create. And if it's red, uh, then that means that it has been posted. Okay, uh, feel free to send me suggestions on what I should record. And I'll try to post one maybe like a once or twice a week, depending on how difficult or easy they are. Okay, um, so yeah, add level to project, stacked wall, door and family and sidelight, egress paths. Um, create schedule uh, from Excel file or CSV, comma-separated um, variable file. 
uh, and jump to referencing sheet button, uh, attach walls. These are, a lot of these are mostly gripes that I have against Revit that should be either buttons or commands or Revit should have already in place in which it doesn't right now. Pretty much, uh, I work for, I live in San Francisco and I work at a firm in the city, uh, which will hopefully be unnamed, um, but you know, in Revit, uh, there's a lot of things that uh, should be easy for us, but they aren't. Uh, I work as an architectural designer uh, in the firm, and you know, like half my job, you know, is picking up red lines. You know, or Chris do this, do that, and you know, if it's you know, like Chris change this one wall type to this and do this through all, all, you know, like 100 walls type of thing. You know, like I don't want to sit there and click that mundane stuff. I would really much rather be doing, you know, other things that are that I like doing. You know, like designing. Um, anyways, uh, I've been doing coding now on my own for the last four and a half, four and a half, five, four and a half, four to five years. Uh, so, done a little bit of stuff. Anyways, um, so these are the other ones. Okay, so these are all in a category from, you know, difficulty, so easy, medium, hard. All right, uh, create a narrative button. If you know, if you're working architecture, you probably know what a narrative is. When you have to issue a bullet, and you also have to issue a narrative. Uh, so, you know, like, I created that in PyRevit using Python, um, but we'll get to that. Again, with the languages of coding, don't be afraid of them. They will be your friends in the end, and they will make your life a lot easier. Um, but we're going to try and go through the basics on this, okay? Uh, so anyways, uh, so draw floor from CAD, draw walls from CAD. I think we all would probably appreciate this button. Um, that one, I think I talked to Jeremy, uh, and we have to learn some uh, CAD.net code, which I have yet to, to get into. Anyways. Create guide lid, place like electrical outlets, you know, they'll have to be, um, I think it's 18 inches from uh, the floor. Don't take my word, definitely do your own homework on where things should be placed when it relates to code. Um, I'm definitely not uh, liable for that stuff. <laughs> uh, if you know architecture stuff, then you probably know that it can get kind of litigious and go down a very dark hole. Um, but we're going to do our best, right? Uh, and if you don't know about it, there's also um, up codes. If you don't know about it already, uh, Upcodes has the entire code book from, oh god, um, 2016. I think they release them every three years, right? So it's every uh, 2013, uh, 16, 19, I think probably goes back all the way to 2010. Um, you know, there'll be uh, all different states, I believe, so you can get stuff for that. Um, and then most of the ones we'll be using, if we ever program in to do checks in the CBC, California Building Code, um, we will be referencing this, right, you know, so that includes your clearances, uh, that includes your ADA stuff. Uh, if we can, we'll try to get into plumbing code to do uh, cal calculations for how many, you know, toilets and sinks you need, and, you know, like, you can run a check on your project to make sure that, you know, it has a lot of stuff. So we're going to try and do that. Like I said, we're going to try, okay? Um, okay, so back to Trello. Uh, so in this, right, so elevate all rooms. A lot of this stuff, too, is being created in Dynamo. Um, but I found that, like for me, uh, I didn't know Dynamo that well, um, and getting into it with all the lines is kind of like Grasshopper. If you didn't do that, if you got into that for Rhino, uh, Rhino can, or sorry, Grasshopper, sorry, Dynamo uh, is, um, you know, you attach nodes to other nodes, um, and you can get really lost in that stuff really fast. For me, it's easier to jump around the code. Uh, once you understand how to read it, you'll begin to understand too. Okay, we're gonna try and take it really nice and slow. Uh, slow is smooth, smooth is fast, right? Try, so we'll try and do that. Um, uh, so, you know, the more difficult ones will be, uh, you know, like convert CAD to Revit, right? Because elevate all rooms, compare Revit schedule with contractor's PDF, PDF schedule. Um, another one I have to gonna add in here is uh, specs, uh, spec check, you know, with what you have in the project. So like for example, my project right now, um, you know, like we have a skylight in the right and the skylight was pretty big in the beginning, it was like 22 feet, 24, I think it was 24 feet across and uh, our, um, you know, and we said, you know, we told our spec writer, you're like, hey, like, can you include this in your specs? And she was like, yeah, sure, go ahead. And you're like, also we don't have a manufacturer, please check it, you know, like, let me know if you need like, okay, cool, great. So me being, uh, uh, you know, like, me being the drafter, you know, like I, or yeah, we'll call it drafter. I put it in the project and it looked good. And then, you know, my uh, project manager comes back and says, Chris, we can't do this. And I, I say, I ask, why not? And he says, because the biggest skylight they make can only go 22 feet. So, 
you know, imagine the owner was not too happy about this when he says, like, oh, crap, you know, like, that's going to cost us, you know, a couple, probably a couple thousand dollars to change, you know, with revisions. And, yeah, so, long story short, um, you, know, you, can, you can get, of course, you know, like, you don't want those things that happen to you. And if you're like me, my memory is horrible. <laughs> I always have to write stuff down. And so with coding, we can also help us with that and to run these checks in our project. And so that's the whole goal of this uh, YouTube course, if you're still listening. Um, yeah, we'll get there, guys. Okay. Uh, all right, so. Might have to cut that part out. We're going to go ahead. Anyways. Um, so here we go. Okay, we're going to. So what you do is, right, you're going to go to this download. Actually, it's okay. We're going to end this right here, and then we're going to start another video to go ahead. Okay. If I can figure out how to stop it.